What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 36 in the sixth grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The problem gives us a right rectangular prism. It gives us a length, a width, and a height for this prism, and we just need to find the volume. So, in order to do a question like this really well, we need to know how to find the volume of a rectangular prism or a box. I wrote that because it takes up less room and less ink. How to multiply fractions and then also what to do with mixed numbers and improper fractions. We're going to have to go back and forth a little bit in this question. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that mixed numbers and improper fractions idea. And I'm going to say it'll be a lot easier to work with these if I change them from 2 and a half to, for instance, using my left and right swoosh strategy, 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5 halves, so two and a half is equivalent to five halves. Same thing for this two and a half. Now I come to three and one fourth, I use my left to right swoosh. Four times three is twelve, plus one is thirteen. That's still thirteen fourths. All right, so now I'm trying to find the volume of this prism, and just to remind myself, my volume is going to be my length, my width, and my height all multiplied together. So 5 halves, 5 halves, and 13 fourths. I'm just going to go ahead and multiply all of these. So now that's 5 halves times 5 halves times 13 fourths. And if you've seen any problem that involves multiplying two fractions, you know that you just multiply your numerators and multiply your denominators. It's actually not going to be any different here. Because here, all I'm going to do for my numerators is multiply all three of them. 5 times 5 times 13 is 325. Same thing for my denominators. 2 times 2 times 4 equals 16. So this is 325 sixteenths. Now I don't know if I can simplify this yet, but I do want to go back from an improper fraction to a mixed number on this before I can confirm which of my answers it's going to correspond with. So in order to do that, I need to figure out how many times does 16 go into 325. I will go ahead and do 325 divided by 16. Now this is a nice strategy in the calculator, but I am only interested in this part. I'm only interested in this whole number because that is the number of times 16 will fit into 325 before I have to think about remainder and leftovers and all that. So my whole number part of my final mixed number is going to be 20. Choice D is looking pretty promising. Let's go ahead and finish this. I multiply 16 by 20 to get how much that 16 or that group of 16 20s is going to take out. And I finally, nope, subtract this number that represents 16 times 20 from my original number of 16ths, and I'm left with just 5. So this is 20 and 5 16ths, which now I can say for sure, matches choice D exactly.